It happens every Tuesday, every Thursday, and sometimes on a Wednesday. Darren, the too tall for his age, can't stop talking 10-year-old has epilepsy. They tell me it's like sheet lightning going off in his brain. Now, I don't know anything about that. I only see the external pain. At the back of the whale blue classroom, he tells me, the whole of my upper body hurts, but I've been trying to keep it a secret because I don't want anybody to be disappointed in me. I almost feel like crying as I tell him, nobody's gonna be disappointed in you. You're unwell and none of this is your fault. I walk him down the stairs and down the atmosphereless corridor to the clinical stench of the white medical room, uncaringly placed next to the boisterous dining hall where the nursery, the noisiest of them all, dine on fish and chips. It must be a Friday. This doesn't normally happen on Friday. Darren lies down on the bed. Heavy eyed, I tell him to close them and instantly he's asleep. I pull a red throw over him, sit next to him and read the only Roll Doll book I've never read before. As wonky lines of fresh faced children stream by, some point, some laugh, they all stare. It's time that he woke. He's had a full hour and although he could probably sleep all afternoon, he either needs to go home or have something to eat and go back to class. I talk to him gently, trying to stir him from his deep slumber. He hears me, my words penetrating his dreams. He doesn't wake, but he speaks to me. I can see you, you're in my dream. Who else is in your dream, I ask him. Lots of people, my family. A smile washes over him, but the serenity is soon lost as his face grapples with a grimace and I ask him, where are you now? I'm in a dark cell he tells me. Everybody's gone. I try to reassure him that he's not alone, that I'm sat right next to him. But it's nearly one o'clock, the end of my day. And so, as he struggles to wake his legs, I tell him, have a great weekend. And I leave him with somebody else. I leave the school ground and think about how we'll do this all again next week. I go home, but I don't leave him behind. I think about him all night. He'll be fine, waiting for me, Monday morning, all puppy dog eyes. But I can't help but worry about what's going on in his head, the increased frequency of his moments, the cause and effects, his mixed up emotions and the repercussions on his confidence, the stress, the strain, the pain. But most of all, I just sit and think about the sheet lightning going off in his brain.